Wow, this is cool. This is fabulous. So this is a 1992 Porsche 911 Carrera Cup. Um, and to know what this car is, you actually have to understand the history of what Porsche went through four years earlier. Um, they made in 1988 a supercar called the 959. And this okay. was a highly desirable car. They made a little over 300 of them. Uh, and it was truly the supercar of the era. It was to compete with Ferrari and Lamborghini. And so they had a lot of high profile, important US customers that wanted this 959. Okay. So uh, Porsche sent eight to them, eight uh, 959s to the United States. Um, however, they were never made legal for the US. They didn't have emission systems on them. There was no catalytic converter. They had never been crash tested. Okay. So the eight cars arrived on a plane uh, to LA International. They were unloaded and the customs agents came and said, what are these? And Porsche said, these are eight race cars. Um, and the custom officials helped them load the cars and they shipped them off the Porsche. After that, the custom officials started talking amongst themselves and they said, those didn't look like race cars. They had carpeting in them, they had beautiful interiors, they had air conditioning. Right. And so the following week, customs went over to Porsche and they impounded the cars. And they said, these are not race cars, these are street cars and they're not legal. And Porsche said, no, no, they're race cars, give us a chance. So Porsche sent the cars, all eight cars, to a tuner called Andile, who promptly took the carpeting out, took the seats out, bolted in a fire extinguisher, put in a racing seat, put on racing slicks, and they took the cars to a track, and they invited the custom officials to come out and drive them to see that they were race cars. So you that's can imagine cool. yeah. the customs officials that's, all said, yes, we'll go. That's a pretty fun day for them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Great. I'd do it. So they went out, they drove the cars, uh, they had a good time, they were amazing cars, and at the end of it they said, these are great, but these are not race cars. These right. are street wow. cars. So and they still Porsche, weren't convinced. They huh? weren't convinced. So Porsche wow. ended up sending all eight cars back to Germany, and they went to their important customers and they said, you can still have your car, but you have to buy it in Germany. And so oddly, if People did. Um, uh, one guy bought it and he put it on his private yacht and he snuck it back into the United States. Uh, another guy was able to convince his local customs people that it was a race car. And famously, Bill Gates brought his back in and it sat in, pounded in customs in San Francisco for 13 years. 13 years, wow. So did he ever get it out? He did. Uh, in fact, what he did is he worked with Congress and they passed a law that allowed, uh, allowed for limited edition cars to, be, to okay. come out as long as they weren't driven on the street. Right, right. It's called the Show and Shine uh, Amendment. Wow. And eventually Bill Gates got his car. Nice. But anyway, four years later, uh, in 1992, uh, there was still a demand for uh, high performance Porsches in the U.S. So uh, they decided to do just the opposite of what they did before. They actually built 45 race cars that they uh, put a racing uh, suspension, a racing transmission, a racing engine in a 911. But then they added carpeting, a leather interior, airbags, catalytic converters, power windows. Mm. And they brought the 45 cars to the US and they told customs, these are street cars. Mm. They took the cars. So why did they need to make them street cars? I mean, if they were the problem was with the race cars, now they're they, getting them. There was a real oh, lack of say, trust yeah, at they, that so era. Okay, so they, they're, between so like they're still, okay, the car bringing manufacturers them, bringing them in the street cars. So yeah, they okay. came into street cars, which yeah, Porsche yeah. knew they could do. Yeah, okay. And as soon as they came in, they took 25 of those 45 cars to Andile. And, uh, and Andile took the uh, carpeting out. They took the seats out. They, they basically stripped the car. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, they rolled it in, they, they welded in a complete roll cage. So a roll bar in the back, a roll bar in the front, mm -hmm. and the tubes along the side of the doors. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and basically made race cars. Okay. Uh, and they offered them for sale to the public as race cars uh, in 1992. The problem with 1992 was we were in the middle of a recession. I remember, I came out of college that year. That's right. I, could, I couldn't get a job. And by the time, uh, and you could have probably never afforded this, no. because by the time <laughs> they finished, these cars were over $100,000, which was wow. a lot of money uh, for a toy, Back if then, you will, yeah. in uh, 1992. So a few of them were bought as race cars, but uh, most of them languished. And um, uh, 16 of them uh, sat in the ports and were never converted. Um, four of them had been uh, converted to parts cars and 25 uh, were converted to race cars. So they took the ones that were converted and sent them back to that same Andile shop and asked them to cut the roll bars out with a chop saw, put the carpeting back in, <laughs> put the interior back in. Hopefully they had and all they, left over from the they last They did, time, right? and they quietly 
sent these cars out to their dealerships and without telling the US government or anyone in customs, they sold these cars to, uh, to high profile people as, uh, as street legal race cars. And so that's why I pulled this car out today. I thought it would be fun for you to drive in a race car that has license plates on it. Yeah, that's gonna be great. I'm can't, I can't wait, let's do it. Let's do let's it, get let's in. go get some All coffee right. and take a ride. <laughs>